Hello, and welcome to Western Washington History. Today we will be diving into the history of Belfair, Washington, located at the end of the Hood Canal Hook. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more history videos from Western Washington. As always, share your experiences or comments on the video in the comments section. Belfair, Washington was once known as Clifton, but before that, the Dulalip tribe would camp at the mouth of the Union River, which they called Freshwater Stream. At the Little and Big Mission Creeks, where Belfair State Park is now, they had a permanent settlement. The Dulalip were part of the Tawana tribe, which is now the Skokomish. The Tawana were comprised of nine villages. In 1841, Lieutenant Case of the Wilkes Expedition and his crew visited the Hood Canal and the mouth of the Union River. They were the first to map and survey the east arm of the Hood Canal. He found many native camps along the Hood Canal. The Portage was a native trail mentioned in Lieutenant Case's diary. It connected Lynch Cove and North Bay near Allen. The Point No Point Treaty of 1855 would put the Tawana at the reservation on the Skokomish River, where the reservation is to this day. The reservation is 8.2 square miles. I hope to make a video about these people in the near future. The first recorded English settlers on the Hood Canal were Franklin and Emily Purdy, who lived there in 1854. Emily was the daughter of Moses and Nancy Kirkland. Franklin and Emily had 11 children. In 1856, they relocated to California. Then in 1859, they returned to the Puget Sound. Nancy Kirkland died in 1863 while the family lived on South Shore. She was buried near Tahuya, on the other side of the water from where they lived, as she requested, which was later named Tombstone Territory. Now, present North Shore Road travels over the burial spot with a sign on the side of the road saying Tombstone Territory. Another recorded settler was Thomas Griffith. In 1865, he homesteaded 149 acres west of the mouth of the Union River. This land was later bought by the Beard family, namesake of Beard's Cove. In 1866, Alfred Jones, a Civil War veteran, homesteaded land on the east side of the river, bordering the Hood Canal. His family had at least 40 acres. In 1880, he was Clifton's first postmaster. No one knows where the name Clifton came from, but it appears on legal documents in 1879. The Clifton Post Office existed from 1880 to 1913, but was closed down due to a lack of business and no one willing to be the postmaster. Clifton School was built in the summer of 1880. A hotel was built also at that time near the bottom of Sand Hill Road. Mail and people were delivered at high tide daily. There was also a saloon in the same area. Belfer looked a lot different at that time. In fact, it wasn't even in the same spot. The town was located near the Union River on Highway 300, or North Shore as locals call it. 1882, Alfred Jones sold the farm to Puget Mill Company and left Clint, Clifton. This is the land that Sam and Mary Theller acquired in 1935 and called it the Sam B. Theller Home and Garden Tracks. John McCreevy, founder of Union City, now just called Union, built a 160 acre farm in 1868 at the mouth of the Union River. Some speculate that he is the one who named the river as it is called Union Creek on the 1871 survey maps. His farm consisted of two large barns, 150 fruit trees, and 40 acres of cleared land. John McCreevy and his brother Ed McCreevy and brother-in-law John Latham formed the Union River Logging Company, the first railroad in Mason County, which was incorporated in 1883. The railroad had a flat car pulled by oxen. In 1885, he sold the land to Puget Mill Company and moved to Union, Washington. At the time of the land sale, the railroad had four miles of track, two rail cars, and a Blackman engine. Puget Mill Company turned the land into a 300-acre farm, which was leased for years and grew all types of produce. They put in steel rails for the railroad, along with a Porter 17-ton locomotive. 
They extended the line eight miles longer and added five train cars. This train was for logging exclusively. The railroad helped to log off most of the old growth timber before 1910 with some harder to reach portions being logged in the 20s and 30s. A report by the U.S. Army states that in 1895 Clifton had a population of 20. Clifton also had a general store, a blacksmith shop, and daily mail to Seattle, as well as a seven mile long steam logging railroad. In 1915, there was once again a need for a local post office. The official story seems to be that in 1915, the U.S. Postal Service realized there were two other Clifton Washingtons, so the postmistress, Elizabeth Murray, renamed the town Belfair. Word is she found the name in a poem she was reading by Elizabeth Barrett Browning called Aurora Lay. A few paragraphs in it says, My critic Belfair wants another book. Then a little later it says, That's hard, my critic Belfair. There was a plantation in South Carolina called Belfair. It opened in 1811 and was a cattle ranch after slavery was abolished. Now it is a golf club. Maybe this is what the poem was referring to, but I am only speculating. Another story about the name was that the students from the school picked it. I also read one person's account who said Mary Theller picked it. Regardless of how, the name was now changed to Belfair. The Murrays owned the first store across from the Clifton School. Sam Theller would buy the store from them in 1926. Speaking of the Thellers, this will be short as I can make an entire film on these two, and I might someday. Sam Theller was born in the San Juan Islands in Washington State. Mary was born in Dewado, but lived in Clifton most of her life. Sam and Mary were married in Seattle and lived there for a couple years. In 1926, they moved to Clifton, or should I say Belfair at this point. They bought the Murray store across from the Clifton School and Mary became postmistress. Around 1915, the U.S. government put a road in from Charleston to Union. Charleston was a town right next to Bremerton, basically part of Bremerton at this point, but then it was a town of its own. The military wanted a route from the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard to Primary Highway 9, or PSH 9. We know it as Highway 101 now. The old Belfair Highway, or Navy Yard Highway, or Highway 21, or Highway 14, as it was called all of these at some point, was opened from Union to Charleston, just outside of Bremerton. At some point, the Thellers moved their store, and the whole town basically moved. The new store was in the brick building across Highway 300 from QFC. It is a coffee shop and a tattoo parlor now, but it was Seabeck Pizza until they built their own new store. When Highway 3 was opened, it got the PSH 14 name. I believe it was renamed Highway 3 in 1964. The Thellers moved once more to their final store location right about where Dairy Queen is now. In 1935, they bought 500 acres on Highway 3 and gave land to the ba Belfair Baptist Church, the Full Gospel Assembly Church, now JK's Treasures. Also, they gave the land for the first fire station, as well as Belfair Elementary and the Thiller Center. They built a house near Rose Point on South Shore. In 1945, they retired from store life and spent their time traveling. In 1950, Mary flipped her car on the old Belfair Highway near the golf course and died, much to the horror of onlookers who could not get her from the burning vehicle. Sam never remarried and died in 1968. Both are now buried in Twin Firs Cemetery in Belfair. When Sam died, all of his wealth was put in a trust estimated to be at $1 million. This trust paid his sister a monthly check, and the rest was left for the community. There was another store owned by George and Alice Pope that operated between 1935 and 1943. It was then leased out to others. I believe it was at the corner of Highway 300 and Clifton Lane. A 
again, I can make a film about all of these founding members of the community, and I just might do that someday. I'm working on getting the basic information out first. In 1948, the Hood Canal Masonic Lodge number 288 was built. The building remains there today. There was once a building across from Local Wrench where Dorothy Harper opened Belfair Drug in 1949. Dorothy and her family had a history in Belfair. She sold it in 1958. It was sold again in 1968. The new owner put a real estate business where the drugstore was. Ray's Barber Shop, now across the street, was also in that building. In the same building was the Belfair Cafe and Glow Room. This business was loved by many. They also had live music. Sadly, years after his death, the building was torn down by his daughter to make way for apartments, which, as of the making of this, are still not there. One might think they tore the old Belfair landmark down to avoid having to hook up to the new sewer line at an astronomical price, but that is a story for another time.